Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With permission, Mr. Speaker, I'll answer this question with questions 7 and 13. There are many factors affecting an individual's mental health. To assess the effect of sanctions and isolation of all other factors would be misleading, and there are a number of checks built into the system to support all claimants, including those with mental health concerns. It's grouped with 7 and 15. As it happens, number 13, I think, has been withdrawn anyway. So there we go. Callum McKay. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I, I think that is disappointing, and we are all on this side of the chamber concerned about the terrible damage that the ideological cuts being made by this government are doing to the most vulnerable in our society. The last two weeks at Prime Minister's questions, my right honourable friend, the member for Murray, has asked the Prime Minister uh, about suicides following on from benefit reductions. Will the Minister publish the details of these investigations forthwith? Minister. The Department carries out reviews to identify whether any lessons can be learned, but I should emphasise, Mr Speaker, that the Information Commissioner has considered this very issue and has upheld the Department's decision not to publish these because of the level of personal information that is contained, and for that reason it would be unlawful to release this information. Joanna Cherry. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In 2014, the Scottish Association for Mental Health, which is Scotland's leading mental health charity, published research which found that 98% of their service users said their mental health had deteriorated as a direct result of welfare reform. Further research this year by the same charity in the facility they run in my constituency at Red Hall Walled Garden confirmed that benefit sanctions have been detrimental to the mental health of service users there. What steps will her government take to address the adverse effects of benefit sanctions on those with mental health problems? Yes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, first of all, let me start by saying that sanctions play an important part in the labour market and encourage people and support them to go back to work. And specifically, with regards to support for claimants with mental health conditions, our staff, our Job Centre Plus staff, are trained to support individuals with conditions during their job search, and they also have access to more expert advice should it be needed. Having Newlands. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, is the Minister aware that her disastrous and failing sanction regime is not only causing untold misery to the people directly sanctioned, impacting on their well-being and mental health, but is also having a devastating impact on the families involved, with a recent Citizen Advice Scotland report highlighting that children are indirectly punished by sanctions? In light of these alarming findings, will the Minister reassess the impact of sanctions on the well-being of the family, and does this pass the Prime Minister's family test? Minister. Well, let me say to the honourable gentleman that our sanctions system is robust and there is clear evidence that it does work and he specifically mentioned support for the family. Let me say to the honourable gentleman that it is this government that is supporting the family through our new life chances measure and importantly ensuring that work pays which is exactly how families get out of poverty and the life chances of children and families improve. Maggie through. Thank you Mr Speaker. Could the Minister confirm that the number of cases that result in sa sanctions is falling and doesn't this show that job centre staff are actually working with claimants to help them engage with their search for employment and the fact that most people that, that are unemployed do actually want to work? Minister. Well, I thank the Honourable Lady for her question and she is right because as we have seen that um, JSA sanctions have been de decreased by over 40% over the last year but also importantly this is about the principle of the sanction system and that it actually helps and supports individual job seekers to comply with the reasonable requirements that are discussed with them, with their work coaches and developed and agreed to help them to move and prepare into work. James Morris. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. People with mental health problems do have particular barriers uh, to get them back into the labour market and get into productive work. So, uh, would the Minister agree with me that uh, the government should be taking all steps to make sure that people with mental health problems are not sanctioned unnecessarily and that we should show flexibility around making sure that they get back into the labour market? Minister. Well, of course, my honourable friend raises some very fundamental points here, which is, of course, as I have stated, Mr. Speaker, our staff are trained to support claimants with mental health conditions during their job search, but importantly to provide more expert advice and support should they need it. I come back to my earlier point as well that claimants are only asked to meet reasonable requirements, taking into account their circumstances, their capability and of course their mental health conditions as well. Mr Richard Graham. 
Can I welcome the recent decision by the Department to trial a process of a yellow card system for 14 days in various places for those being sanctioned. And I also welcome the Department's decision to have advisors at several food banks to trial whether that would also help some of the benefits transition problems that have been noticed. Would my right honourable friend say when she expects that there will be enough evidence for the Department to share with us the outcomes of those trials? I thank my honourable friend for his question and he's right, these trials are important and they are bringing together obviously more support and advice for individual claimants. With regards to when we can expect to see more information and the details of these trials, I would have thought early in the new year at some stage. Mr Frank Field. Could I also thank the government for their acceptance of the Feeding Britain report calling for a yellow card system. Uh, before the government is able to report to the House on the impact of a, a good warning system to people that maybe sanctions are coming down the road, they will need to begin the trials. Is there any chance of the Minister today telling us when the trials will begin and, and when they will be completed? <laughs> Well, I, I thank the Chair of the Select Committee for his question, and I can tell him that we are actually working out the details now, and I'll be very happy to discuss the um, further details as to when we'll be rolling them out with him um, pr pr quite shortly. Dr Ailey Whiteford. So, Speaker, the so-called yellow card uh, pilot scheme is actually an admission by the government that the sanctions regime yep. isn't working at the present mm -hmm. time, and it's particularly badly failing people with serious mental illnesses. <laughs> Why is the government waiting until next year to bring in this pilot scheme? And in the meantime, will they please just stop sanctioning people who are seriously ill? Yeah. 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 Well, what I say to the Honourable Lady is that I would respectfully disagree with her um, on the point that she is making. Claimants are only asked to meet reasonable requirements, taking into account their circumstances. And I think, as she will find with the pilots as they are underway, that, again, this is about how we can integrate support for claimants and importantly, provide them with the support and the guidance to help them get back to work. Dr Ailey Whiteford. I've listened carefully to the Minister's response, but the reality is that people with mental health problems are being disproportionately mm -hmm. sanctioned, and that's been evident for some time now. Why won't the government listen to voices across this House, including from the Work and Pension Selection uh, Select Committee, and subject the sanctions regime to full independent review? Here, here, here. Here. Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'd make just a few points to the Honourable Lady. For a start, the government has been listening, and we have responded to the Work and Pension Select Committee, hence the reason why we will be trialling and piloting the new scheme. I reiterate my comment earlier on that our staff are, uh, are trained to support claimants with mental health conditions, and there is there is no evidence to suggest that mental health um, claimants are being sanctioned more than anybody else. We provide the support through our job centres and our claimants are only asked to meet reasonable requirements. Debbie Abrahams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, the Minister may have inadvertently uh, slipped up there. There is clear evidence from last year that 58% of people with mental health conditions on the Employment Support Allowance uh, work-related activity uh, group were uh, sanctioned. Uh, obviously that is over half and that's equivalent to 105,000 people. 83% in a mind survey say that their health condition was made worse as a result of this. The government's own evaluation of their work programme has not only shown how ineffective this is with 8% of people with mental health conditions uh, getting into sustained uh, work, but on top of that, the work, it also shows that puni punitive sanctions regime introduced by this government just doesn't work. So why will the government not commit to undertaking an independent review on sanctions? Minister. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, clearly, I think the Labour Party have now changed their policies on sanctions, which, of course, is one that they used to re um, support. What I'd say to the Honourable Lady is that the sanctions system is kept under constant review. We are trialling the new early warning system, which was recommended by the Work and Pension Select Committee, and I would have thought she would have welcomed that. I, I would also make the point as well that sanctions play an important part in the labour market system by supporting people to get into work and in particular with people with health conditions as well. Well ESA sanctions and the ESA was a system that was put into place by the Labour government which is the party opposite conveniently have forgotten that as well. We are very clear with the sanctions system. It is clear, it is fair and it is effective in promoting positive behaviours to help claimants to get back into work. 